we practiced this at least like four Pretty times good. before we got on here. <laughs> That's close. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm Sal. I'm Dan. Because I we didn't mention destroyed Andrew. Destroyed the live cam. Well, one, we didn't mention Andrew. Andrew, and it might be the first case file where we just didn't. No one introduced themselves. <laughs> no, we've everybody done that knows who we are at this point. We've done that many times. Have we? Have we? Yeah, usually you just forget. Oh. Yeah, well, I, definitely on Power Hours, definitely on other stuff. I mean, yeah, oh, definitely yeah, Power yeah, Hours, power but hours. it's like you're not listening to it. If you're if you're a new listener, you're not listening to a Power Hour. Like, <laughs> maybe that's what. All, maybe you're a new listener, you only listen to Power Hours. That would. That's a that's a strange breed of a person. They're out there. <laughs> I'm sure they're out there. It's just like okay, all right. That's weird. I love Power Hours. I mean, yeah, yeah we love Power Hours, but it's like I, I would assume that people come to listen for subject matter over just random dudes chatting it out. <laughs> random dudes with subject matter. Yeah, yeah but the power... subject matter. Oh, yeah. Okay. No direction needed. <laughs> but this yeah. isn't a random This episode. isn't random. <laughs> that, should have been our, that should have been what we called those instead of Power Hours. No direction needed. That's a great podcast. That's pretty good. Yeah. But it's already a podcast. If we get it, we copyright, copyright, that's ours. Yeah, that's it's a good band uh, name too. That's a pretty good band name. We're in May 2023. Copyright. Yeah, yeah. That's how it works now. That's you just ours. say it. You just say it on a podcast, and boom, that's copyright. I'm gonna make that. Right off. I'm, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna submit that podcast feed. No oh, fine. Done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're heading over to Malta. Malta, tiny isles in the yes. middle of the Mediterranean. This is where malt balls come from, right? Correct. This is where. Uh, Chocolate malt balls, chocolate like whoppers. I don't know. That makes like sense. Little... I had to look it up, so I got a, I got a little screen here. Chocolate malt balls. What's yeah, the what opposite of enhance? Dehance. Dehance. There's Malta. Dehance. Dehance. I'm, I'm just zooming out. Dance. Dehance. Yeah. Dance. Dehance. Southern, <laughs> off the southern tip of Sicily, you have Malta. Ooh. Tiny. Yes. It's like an island the size. It's pretty much the island. The islands themselves are like the size of a. Like a city, like a big city. Like they're not Ooh. they're not big. Pretty small. The whole island. Yeah, you can Yeah, it's oh, yeah. look at this technology really? Braden's pulling in here. When what Woo-hoo! what is this you're using? Oh my god. Wow, I've never seen it's that. Techno before. sorcery. Yeah, there we go. Um yeah, it's yeah, Mediterranean, right in the middle. Yeah. It it's got like you know, as we're gonna get into portions of it, is like you know we're gonna get into the meg- megalithic structures. With as you look at this, just rem- remember when we're talking about these things, where this is fucking located. Because like when I was learning about the megalithic structures and stuff, I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. Then I like kind of like I was like, where is it? And I looked and I was like, okay, <laughs> wait, what? In the middle there? <laughs> what? The, what the fuck? I was like, that's so weird. <laughs> It's not a big island. No, it is not. Look at it. In terms of like square kilometers. Look how fast I can move my cursor from end to end. I mean, yes. Right? I mean, you could measure it. Google Google Maps lets you do that if you wanted to measure it. But yeah, Uh, it is a very very tiny island, but it is packed with lots of cool little structures and things. And there's tons of archaeological mysteries that are just sitting there uh, for people to ponder upon and have been puzzling for archaeologists since like the pretty much the early 1900s if not before um one of these there's a lot of stories and there's a lot of legends and there's a lot of stuff that surround the megalithic structures on malta because there's plenty of them there's not just like there's not just like a couple temples or whatever there's a number of like different uh g g like almost geological and, I think there's like nine, 19 ones. sites of note, like 19 like mm-hmm. megalithic sites. So it's I'm, it's got a whole like everything on there is like the whole fucking island is like a UNESCO World Heritage site. Feels like like yeah. the whole the whole place. Like, <laughs> I, after seeing this, I'm like, fuck, this is on the bucket list of somewhere I would love to go. Yeah, you, like, you, you so got cool. you got your classic megaliths, man. Some some of them like 40, 50 tons, giant slabs of stone stacked doorways. Like it's right? on this awesome. tiny island. In the middle of the Mediterranean, uh, I, I think a one like the, one of the craziest thing is this predates so many megalithic structures, uh, pyramids, uh, Stonehenge, all those. It was this uh, yeah, was a number this of was like considered too, to be like the old, one of the oldest ones until they found 
Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe. Tepe. Yeah, this was Go this was the this was the one that rewrote every. They're like, we, we got to rewrite everything. And then <laughs> Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe is double as old. Yeah, then they're <laughs> like Malta who. <laughs> Man, it's super dope. Uh, one one of the most prominent uh, one of the most prominent structures that they have there that they they find uh, most fascinating is these temples called the. I had to look up how to say this because it's like the way that they spell it is. I, I, you know, I don't speak. Is it Maltese? Is that is that what they speak? Yeah. At first sure glance, I thought it was Ganja <laughs> Temple. Right away, boom. That's what. Yeah, I that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, it's, it's, that's temple. an easy one. You know, any word in like that's it written in English, using the English lexicon, lexicon that hits you with the double G to start a word. You're like, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> yeah. I, I thought was not it was. Taught. I thought it was like. <laughs> I was not g- taught how this works. Gigantija, gigantija, or something. I was trying to say it all real funky, yeah. and then I looked it up, and then um, gigantia, uh, gigantia, like gigantia, yeah. like gigantia temples, um, which are these ancient mythic uh, temple complexes that are located uh, there. Uh, on the island of like Gozo Malta, which is like the other, like it's kind of like two islands, right? It's like it's kind of like a two small little, island chain, and that, like, yeah, two yeah. main islands and a couple little specks like surrounding it. But. Um, yeah, and, there's like yeah, two main, and then there's two little ones. So, um, ones. kind of the ba- the basic outline of these things is like from from what we know about these temples is that they were uh, supposedly you know built between uh, 3600 and 3200 BCE, so that makes them over 5,000 years old. At, at least point, five, at least five thousand years old, um, and they are among the earliest freestanding stone structures in the world. They predate, mm-hmm. like Braden said before, they predate Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. So they are they are among the earliest freestanding. Not that they are like the top, but they are among the earliest freestanding stone <laughs> structures. Um, now, uh, when you look when you look at these temples, they're very uh, like the, the construction of them is like it is mind boggling that the way uh, that they are built. It's kind of like they're like almost structures within structures, um, well, the and, way that they are put together. And I just use this tool. So like the the big island is 26 kilometers from tip to tip uh, or 16.77 miles. And if you're just. Let's just include both of them together, even though there's there's quite a bit of water a little bit between the two main islands. We're talking like tip to tip, 43 kilometers, 27 miles. And you have this many structures, ancient structures on these fucking little islands. Um, most of the temples include these like these very massive uh, limestone blocks in their construction. And some of these weigh over 50 tons and they would that they were moved there, uh, quarried, and then they ended up moved there. And then they have the uh, the walls, which are made of these thick and, and solid uh along with like the ceilings which are made of like corbelled stone slabs. So like another type of stone that they got put together. Now uh, archaeologists are still not sure what the exact purpose of the Gigantia temples are. They're not fully understood about what their function was or what their purpose served, uh, you know, with the culture that was living there at the time and that constructed these, uh, originally constructed these temples. Um, but, you know, it, I mean, it's everything, uh, you know, theories kind of range from everything from whether they were had religious or ritualist ritualistic significance or you know perhaps they were used for communal gatherings you know ceremonies uh anything even places of burial uh even though it's like right here like um i don't think any like human remains like a like a a, you know not human but they did they did say they found like animal remains and that might mean either like ritual sacrifice or just having a good old feast yeah. <laughs> just a big old cookout in the middle of these temples um and, and they also and have, have a, they'll have that open top too right right at least now like it's, yeah. it's like a full stone enclosure with a perfectly open top so if that was a roof it would have been, had to have been some type of like so i guess it's hard to imagine if it had a roof because it would have to have been wood Humongous. i guess huge like a wood huge rafters and but then, it's round like, so it'd have to have like a, yeah. a like a rounded top like an couldn't have, not, not have like a standard shed roof on top of that yeah i guess you'd have yeah i mean you could have wood i guess if you, if you had wooden like supports i guess kind of sticking out like maybe something like that when you look at them um now uh it, there are a number of like historically important artifacts that have been found uh near this site and at the site itself uh that you have these statues of um 
well, they refer to them as obese, <laughs> obese figures, which they often refer to as just fat ladies, uh, which they find heavy set around. statues, you know, heavy yeah, set yeah. statues. Um, you know, maybe that back then, like, you know, it, that was the, you know, uh, that's that a symbol of they wealth, you know? Mm, yeah. You had, the, you had that weight on you. Yeah. It was Rich. a single uh, wealth and, and health, you know, it's like that you were healthy and hale, heart disease. You, it may, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, you were eating well back then. If you were eating well back then, you could pack on some fat, man. Like you were living high. Like that's pretty much it. But um, it's usually it's usually thought that these that a lot of these artifacts, which are found here at this site, and then a number of other sites uh, on the islands, uh, like within Malta, a lot of these other places, like connecting them, that perhaps that these are all connected to some type of either religion or cult uh, that. Uh, worship like this this was their their um their idea of uh you know their embodiment of the goddess of fertility you know you have these very which we, we've seen in other cultures too you see in other cultures you know the very large the heavy set yeah. figures you know uh, or the prominent giant cock statues you go to in, you know in asia or anything okay yeah <laughs> same thing, same thing, but different, yeah same thing different sex um yeah, yeah so the, part of that religion too dan is what i read is that's one of the reasons why they've dated this temple complex to where it is. It's because there are similar figurines and sculptures found in all the small, like, I guess, residential ruins, which are very mm -hmm. small, not megalithic at all. So, right. like, well, I guess these people who lived here at these settlements were also here. Therefore, they built this temple because their stuff's all over. Yeah. I, yeah, it's a perfectly logical conclusion to come to when you have that kind of stuff. But, yeah, that they were, uh, you know, or all worshiping these temples? kind of thing. Were the temples already on Malta? yeah Thanks were they the already here did they build them uh and we're not really sure well, so well, you, you think i was going to stay on this point for a quick sec because we talked about how small that island is and the mm -hmm. size of some of these complexes we're going to get to more after and this, the weight of some of these of the big stones like 40 tons we're talking like the size of a small house in a stone <laughs> yeah and they're building and, these in the middle in the middle of the ocean supposedly and, and they either they would have had to if you go with the timeline there's no land bridge at this time so you would and have like, to sail there. Let me just there. tell you, like, like boats weren't that great five thousand years ago. Mm, yeah, probably not. I mean, we don't <laughs> they, really know. They much weren't about spectacular. Them. I was <laughs> looking. At, I was looking at some like boat history, and I was kind of. I was not impressed. Bundled wood, right? Wrapped tree. The first, the first, the first boat was like a like a canoe, and it's eight thousand years ago, and I was like, it's basically like a hay canoe just tightly bound like it's like hey <laughs> i mean yeah they weren't they definitely probably wouldn't have been like Reeds, importing <laughs> importing any uh uh of their heavier building materials on those boats i'm sure um but yeah it's like yeah the the fact that that we do have an established culture here that was that can be connected to these structures that it's like did they, did they build these or were they were they already here um one of the people who uh who Say contests it, <laughs> one it. of the uh one of the people who contests the the official dating or what is considered the official dating of these things uh is graham hancock uh the legend himself the legend uh the man the myth the legend uh graham hancock uh who uh, always makes who a, hell of a point who always sails the croatian the croatian waters on yachts uh with um <laughs> oh. with saves the day yeah. Uh, with man who saves the day talking uh, ancient it, cultures and has, ruins and they probably they probably talked about dmt they probably talked about the gigantia temples at some times because they do also feature prominently in his uh what is it the ancient apocalypse right ancient Joe? apocalypse on netflix is awesome mm -hmm. highly recommend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh i think uh what is it you watch you watched it i watched then, it when it first came out and then i refreshed my memory just before we recorded this one because but he, so, yeah, he's he's pretty much saying that he's making the exact. We're making the points he's making. He's that this this is a small island nation. Um, they would have had to just sail over, probably from Sicily or some other. They think Sicily, sail over, bring animals, domesticate it, farm, and then seemingly out of nowhere, they just build these gigantic megalithic structures out of well, nowhere. And that, and seemingly that out of mean, nowhere. And that doesn't, to me, like right there, when you say it like this, this doesn't make sense because if you were to look, let me pull up my map again here. If you were to look at this and say you're, you're like, obviously 
you didn't start on Malta. You came to Malta, right? There would be evidence, like you would think there would be like evidence of these things being built somewhere else prior, you know, prior to be like, it doesn't seem like a good area to be like, you know what we should do here? Build some structures we've never built before in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> really big. Uh, really big. Let's get crazy. We get, we're going to have to bring more people now. It's like you had people wherever you came from. Like if, you, if it was Sicily, Italy, you know, some of the other regions there, it would make it like it would make more sense in my little monkey brain. If you had like some of some more of these kind of ancient structures on the edge of the Mediterranean and you're like, oh, and they're on Malta. You're like to me, I would be like, OK, that makes sense. It's very strange to me that you. This is the first instance of these of these things in the area. It's just like boom on this island and everywhere on this island, nowhere else. A small island, so most like if there's a if there's a a size it looks like a sizable population, most of that island's going to be farm and livestock land. Like because like, there's nothing there's no like you're not really trading it that they're that far away that that long ago you're just, like self sufficient on this island. Well, and so, the, uh, the other thing is is. It's not like of what we know of the area. This predates like you know all these things. It's not like this was a, like a hustling. The Great bustling. pyramids pre pre built predates the Great yeah. Pyramid. Pre, it, but most the, most pyramids in Egypt. It's not like this is like a of what we know of history. This would be a time where this is like this epic trade hub of like you know because this would be so advanced for that time that there would be no one else. You would be light years ahead of everyone else. So who it's like, if this was like a Mediterranean hub of like, Hey, come on to the Isle of Malta and check out this. Like it was like the Vegas of the ancient world. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing else to support that, that like hypothesis of like, Oh, this was a, a place where everyone came and visited. Cause we, there's just, there's not these kind of civilizations anywhere else at this time that we know of right now. Yeah, and I think another one of the points that Graham Han Hancock makes is that um, that we, uh, like we go back to the pyramids. If you go back to the pyramids, you can see you can see at least with the pyramids that there is a there's a definite kind of learning curve that there are yeah. there are yeah, progression some of pyramids. pyramids right right next to right next to the <laughs> the big pyramids are little pyramids that are like those aren't exactly the great ones, and then you know yeah. even farther out in the desert, you'll we find plenty that are like these were the seemingly could be prototypes considered prototypes for the big ones right but here on malta it's just these structures it's like they just built them that there's no there's no like we built this one first and then this one and then like there's no like they seem to uh, just all pop up together just yeah like, they're just like th this is the way we're gonna build it some of the structures can be like okay well they built like a part inside first and then they built like another part outside um kind of like encasing structure building structure on structure but still it's still kind of imp it's still impressive that these 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 structures kind of just held together as as long as they did and were built so early especially with considering just the the size and the weight of the stones that they were being moved around at that time when you basically all that you had was like carton wheel maybe <laughs> probably not yeah. there was no wheel in egypt wasn't there not then they not build those without fucking wheel pretty sure uh, yeah so it's like yeah you may or may not had wheels or like carts or anything for some of these structures like that they built. Well, like let's be real here though like you know if, if you're if the if you're rolling logs it's just a long wheel you know what i mean yeah like you had it's, it's a, technically yeah it's a wheel there's it's not a mounted with something wheel. on top of it yeah, yeah. right yeah so grant so hancock and the boys they always say like <laughs> hancock and the boys you know hancock. uh they say that well, there must have been a civilization that predated, who, like the who, like, and on Malta, like bef before. We've go talked about Gobekli Tepe; they have unearthed that. But there's been no, there was not a lot of evidence of humans on Malta until they found a couple of Neanderthal bones. So Neanderthals had died out tens of thousands of years before this, if you go with the records. So if you go with that, they're very well. Neanderthals obviously came down on a land bridge because that the glacial maximum, the sea level is like 280 feet or 300 feet lower, which actually connects to mainland Europe. So you could, you could have walked across. That's all the, the animals would have got there. And as the, as the ice caps melted and the island was cut off, you'd have a trapped civilization. So this kind of goes with that theory of that someone built these. They were wiped up. They lost this ancient advanced civilization from some type of global apocalypse, common impact on the ice caps in this case. Wiped out maybe some flooding, not a lot of 
remains of the people there and then through maybe they did jump on a boat they found this island they brought they resettled it they found these temples repurposed rebuilt made their gods about them settled around them had parties in them and then as history's passed the only only documented evidence of is of these people so therefore they built it is kind of the, the theory so there must have been someone else who could build these megaliths because this shouldn't be in the t- in the timeline of humanity shouldn't be here <laughs> like it's just like where did these come from so uh, you have all of these these temples and these structures that are built above ground. Now, there's an even, I would say, I, to me, it seems even more impressive when you move on to the temple complex or the, the, the kind of uh, the underground temple complex of the hypogeum of Hal Seflin. <laughs> it's the great the, name. Um it, it is it is fully underground structure. This is this is very uh, reminiscent of what we talked about the, those caves in Turkey, um, the underground caves there. It is um, a a a very uh, elaborate complex of just these underground chambers uh, that were built. For, why were they built? Why were they built underground? Not really sure because it's an all. Of it. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. Well, I think when I when I was reading this and stuff, I was like. I think some of this stuff was built because, like, it's not like Malta has a source of fresh water. They don't have a lake or anything. So, like, if this is limestone, it would kind of make sense to me that you would build these things to catch rainwater. Like, you you might build this stuff underground to collect as fucking much rainwater as possible. Because, like, that to me is such an obstacle of living there. That was one of the first things I looked. I was like, is there a fucking lake here or anything? Like, how are these motherfuckers drinking? Like just, uh, yeah, so, like surviving on rainwater. Like I mean, you have to a dig fucking, a well. Like you dig a, a well. Like that's mm-hmm. to me. To, yeah, yeah, dig a well, or like if there's a you know if this is like a lot of limestone area, like maybe there is kind of like a cenote kind of thing, like in Mexico where there's just like you know these pox of uh, areas that collect enough rain water over the years and are cool enough that it doesn't evaporate. Because I'm like, it doesn't seem like a good area for suit for humans. If you're all you're doing is living off rainwater. I mean, I guess people live in the desert and shit, but very difficult. Yeah. Um, the problem. I, it would, so it would get hot lugging all those boulders around you. You, you, you need you water. Oh yeah. Thing. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Hydrate. Uh, so the hypogeum itself is actually dated back to the Neolithic period. So probably between uh, 3,600 and 2,500 BCE. And it's, you know, again, estimated to be at least 5,000 years old and that the entire complex was carved out of the solid limestone using, you know, from what they can tell, it's just primitive. Yeah, like primitive tools that would would have been available to them, probably, you know, like antler picks and like stone hammers. Like, that's all you got. So fucking long. So long. long. An unbelievable amount of time. Or it was already there. Or it was resettled. um well to be honest like when you when you give when you give me the options of like oh yeah you just had like a generation of family that just like chipped away at this thing forever or it was there and these people claimed this area with these tools and it's not it's not just that they chipped it away it seems to be a chip chipped in a way that it actually has acoustical properties Mm -hmm. like purposeful like they seem like designed uh, that is one of the more remarkable features of the hypogeum and that, you know, when people go there and, and, and I think, it, I think it's, it's still open. Um, I think, I think they it just, it for a reopened. While and then I think just reopened, reopened. Yeah, uh, it for reopened. people to go in. It's like, and uh, you know, you go in there and they will tell you that certain chambers exhibit very unique resonance. Like they produce almost a reverberating effect or they even amplify the sound uh, within uh, some of these chambers. And that most the, the archaeologists and the people who study the hypogeum say that a lot of this is intentional. Like there, there's no way they didn't know what they were doing. Like this is when, like, this is something they wouldn't have been aware of, but they were, they were purposely designed to do this to, to and either. See, it seems like each and each like chamber that, the, that they've tested, like is almost like it's for this purpose. Like it's this frequency. If you were to chant this tone, it's going to amplify better in this room compared to this room compared to that room so it's like they had different uses for the rooms in this fucking thing yeah that's how they summoned the fucking megazord is they all would have to go in the room and fucking <laughs> gotta hit the perfect frequencies <laughs> it, it's that's absolutely mind-boggling to me that they're like you know what 
before these people are start chipping away with their fucking antlers, they're like, listen, I know everything about sound. Crazy idea. <laughs> Let's just chip away at this limestone. And when we get down there, this is going to be crazy. What I'm going to, what I'm going to build here. Just, I wish we had some better tools. <laughs> like there's no, at this time, there's no, I'm pretty sure there's no like written, there's no hieroglyphs, nothing written in these caves or this, even on Malta itself. So like this, whatever culture is there. No, yeah, no, there's not, no one. Look at this. They didn't write, write anything down. Yeah. So the, the hypogeum, like the hypogeum's discovery is like, it's kind of interesting. And the fact that it was kind of discovered by accident, like when they found it. Like, uh, because Malta is such a small island and stuff like this, uh, I guess it went through a type of kind of a, when it was going through kind of its industrialization and urbanization, a lot of the areas on there expanding out, like they were stumbling on a lot of these, a lot of these archaeologically significant sites that they just kept. Finding. It's kind of like in Egypt now where it's like you dig it, you can't dig 10 feet without finding like a, cha- a burial chamber chock full of mummies. Like I said, you know, and probably I, 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 it makes me everywhere. wonder like how much stuff m- might have been over like entrances to tunnels and stuff oh sure accidentally like ran over demolished because in world war ii is a very strategic island it's like the point of like british naval fleet and I imagine when they're bu- say they're building barracks or they're building stuff for the for the dock or whatever they are it's like fuck it what's this oh shit mm-hmm. i don't know bury it bury it bulldoze it <laughs> pour some cement on it it's over it's like how much stuff is underneath yeah, and it's um a lot of its a lot of its excavation again it was accidental. It was just kind of like before anybody even got in there to document it. It was just like pretty much like road workers and stuff that just kind of like ran into stuff and like oh that's this a road, let's... that's road workers nightmare. <laughs> halt. Yep, you got to stop everything and then you're like okay, well, I got to you know pick up this stuff and move it and then you know somebody comes out there realizing that wait, no, this stuff's really important. You guys are just chucking it into a back of a truck and hauling it off to the dump. Like what the fuck? <laughs> this stuff's 5,000 years old. Uh you yeah, know. you literally you you literally have like a round table with all the boys and you're like, "All right, boys, ethics time. Do we pretend we never saw it and just continue on or we all want the next couple weeks off while they How big how big was the stuff. how big was the bone you found? Yeah. pinky finger not bury it you're gonna keep bury going what that skeleton have angel wings like i think so like i don't know maybe nah. like it's I mean, check it, it, check it in the back he thinks this is important nah it's whatever that, was a, t- that skeleton got webbed toes nah, i can check it in the back horns <laughs> um so with it being kind of an accidental discovery there's a lot of reports and stuff that have like um that were kind of published and so there's things that are hard to verify but sound fantastic when you kind of come out it because there's reports like when it was originally discovered the first time there were over seven thousand skeletons found piled inside the chambers stocked um so which they were kind of being like oh like these maybe this is a burial chamber and then there was some talk um on you know in the initial phases of the excavation like i think in like 19 like early 1900s like very beginning of the uh, 20th century they found um, xenomorph skulls well yeah the, well they said elongated skulls so there Entry is some de- <laughs> potentially xenomorph uh there is some debate as to whether when they were referring to the these elongated skulls they used the kind of phrasing as they had the long style skulls and kind of back in 1900s you still had the kind of phrenology you know the fad that was still kind of going around you you, the the science that was based on measuring of the skull like the size of the skull basically being like okay that's what determines your a whole bunch of stuff you know uh you could you could judge a person's like you know ethnicity and like their ancestry and then they're like uh, pretty much cognitive development all by the shape of their skull which we all know is kind of not none of that adds up anymore but the terminology um would have been something similar to that being like oh okay this is this is a long type skull versus a short type skull but anyways uh elongated skulls were uh, purported to have been part of this discovery that these people had these long type of skulls some people are saying that they, uh, some of them didn't have they lacked the um the fossa meridian is which the joint that that runs along the top Your of the plate. skull yeah um, yeah i'm pretty sure that's that, uh yeah that's a tragically hip song the fossa is it is it it could be fossa meridian (laughs) you just sing it sing a couple bars and then we'll get it (laughs) yeah i don't think that's how it goes Um, like a handful of listeners from canada that knows that (laughs) 
Um, but here's here's something really interesting that when you had these skulls and these human remains, right? And so they were shipping off. So maybe a, maybe a number of them did get mixed up and did get shipped off to the dump before everybody got there and said, "Hey, no, hold hold your horses before you dump all this stuff out. This is really important." Um, but they did recover like a number of things, and you know, somewhere between probably like a thousand and 700 but over the years it seems like the kind of the numbers or the estimates kind of have dwindled down gradually from like 700 to 500 then it was 200 then it was like 100 then it's apparently zero because these things the, the these bones and these human remains went missing at some point gone. they all went missing they're gone nobody knows where they went so they're in the basement in of the some... smithsonian right now i don't no, know the, locked no, up with the giants the, and shit at the vatican yeah or at the vatican yeah um so so nobody really knows and kind of one of the things is that some people kind of place the the blame on the uh the person who was part of the the first the first recorded archaeological investigations uh and the head was by the, uh, the name of sir Themis themistocles zamet uh who is a maltese archaeologist and physician uh and he started in the early 1900s to excavate the hypogeum um but some people say that he wasn't that really great at like record keeping so most of the research and, <laughs> and, and notes and all of He's that like i did it i think yeah what i think it's that? important i think it's important to remember that archaeology back in like the early 1900s and like in late 1800s was fucking crazy like yeah, you could just anyone, do anything anyone you would just, was an archaeologist if anybody wants to get into crazy like go back into the, the the you know when they were putting dinosaur bones together you know look up the history of the iguanodon i think if everybody remembers that how they put the like you just take bones and you would just put them together and you'd be like this is how i think they would fit and it's completely wrong like it's just like yeah. you know it's like they knew nothing the people who were digging these things up knew nothing about anatomy they didn't know any of these things like keeping track of that's the brontosaurus yeah. well i saw I, I saw a video one time of someone like just a little off topic where someone was like you want to know how bad fucking these people who put together dinosaurs were and who like drew what they think these skeletons were look at this skeleton and look at this dinosaur right and then they showed this picture of a dinosaur and they showed the skeleton and you're like oh yeah and they're like wrong that dinosaur doesn't even exist it's a goose <laughs> that's a goose's skeleton and you're like oh shit like oh all right um well, and yeah and way off. <laughs> you have to remember like even around this around this time early 1900s people were having fucking like they were having mummy parties like you know they would dig up mummies and they would take like you know rich posh you know uh, europeans would basically have whole parties and you'd have like a dead mummy like a mummy unwrapping party like that's what they would have they'd have actual mummies <laughs> shipped from egypt and they'd be like, yeah, here, we were going to put them on display and, you know, kind of, you know, fucking eat, you know, eat Victorian sushi off of them. I don't know. <laughs> fucking crazy. Fucking it's in nuts. the corner of the room. Well, you're like, oh, what's under there? And you're like, oh, uh, that's stinky. Uh, yeah, it's kind of gross. And it's like, but yeah, that was a, that was a kind of normal occurrence. And so when you think of this stuff, it's like, yeah, tons of shit could have gone missing because nobody was keeping track of any of this shit. <laughs> well, it, 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 then it, it also leads, you know, to the mystery a little bit of when they're like hey like these skulls may have been elongated and stuff and then it's like hey well, we don't know where any uh, it's, yeah, all gone. Gone. it's gone it's all gone it's, gone. it's like well how elongated were these skulls <laughs> they have any picture nothing it was 1900s like god damn that, that would be something though if there was elongated skulls because they had you know elongated skulls in egypt not that long after and there's they've been all around the world like people trying to stretch their skulls to imitate something right Imitate yeah. or a sign of royalty. Like, let's just stretch our brain that looks and right. our whole skull. Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> let's yeah. just put boards on our children's head and slowly why. tighten them until their head is like a point, like a pylon. Looks that cool. looks pretty cool. Looks pretty. Like, what are, where, where, where do you get that from? You like, get all that the, from something else, and you're dude, like, of all the crazy shit humans have we do. We've done like we've have crazy just this, this crazy shit we've crazy, done over the years. Like, Cranium stretching and all this shit. Is, yeah. I think I think insane. neck elongation is pretty weird too. Like but even that too, definitely. why? Why are you fucking uh, trying to make your neck long? Like what I is that? Cool. Like when you when at you least your head, at least the brain of your body is still the right in the right cavity. Your neck is longer, but your head is the same shape. When you put your head so through the boards and it fucking like stretches back like a pylon why why are somebody why the, you know, some some king had some really high forehead and everybody's like that's cool that's like it, i yeah i wanted my head to look like that it was the my, you know the king. 
the, that was the same in Egypt, but they call him the alien king, Akhenaten or whatever. Akhenaten. Yeah. He had the, all the, in all the hieroglyphs, he has the fucking flat elongated yeah, head. Everybody too. thought that was, and everybody thought that was pretty rad. And they were like, yeah, I want my head to look like <laughs> Now that. you see that kid in school and you just call him five head. <laughs> right. And that's what you yeah. call him. Now. Like, <laughs> Everyone yeah. had a kid in the eyes who had that yeah. huge fucking forehead. That Eight guy's for, that royalty was royalty five thousand years ago. <laughs> and my Your head's not tall forehead. enough though, Dad. I'm talking about guys with a really tall forehead. Yeah. One of them box head motherfuckers. Yeah. Alien it's, you know, you went to school with an alien hybrid, like probably. Yeah, that that, you know. that that kid was a he's a king of humanity five thousand years ago. Yeah. Oh, now yeah. he's being called five head. Yeah. Yeah. The rest How of us far are they have fallen. Had our heads bound to look like that. <laughs> uh um so yeah we talked we talked about the the unusual ac- acoustic properties of the hypogeum but it, yeah there is there is some theories out there that it's perhaps like you know not only um were these these just used for like rituals purposes or singing or entertainment or stuff like that that these could have maybe these unique resonances and amplifications of sound were actually created um using like how how would you figure it out like how did how did they you know that's one of the questions you have to ask like how did they how did they figure out that all of these these sounds and frequencies interacted just in such a way that it, it, like they would work because it's not like you're just going to carve it out and being like okay we if we put this chamber exactly here this distance from another yeah, chamber you know we're going to know that it's going to sound we need to dig this chamber right here to make it sound this to make we it have to no have this cha- <laughs> we have to have this chamber perfectly this many this wide by this long by this tall with the same this angle of wall and it's going to make this frequency they knew for some reason they knew as like healing properties or like you go in this chamber you go in this chamber when you're what whatever some type of illness and it heals you faster or they had a reason to make these chambers in a way that resonate like that it's fucking wild so some of the some of the speculation will be that um, that they were they were taught this like they could have been taught this by this uh, perhaps the you know uh, was it um, our buddy Freddie Silva would call them the shining ones or the, the you Nephilim know, those, man those the Nephilim the uh, Atlanteans post fucking uh, the Atlanteans Lemurians uh, any any type of uh you know destroyed civilization you know perhaps some of their scholars or their their you know those who fled from the destruction of their homeland came here um, or were already here or they were already there maybe and taught um they taught the 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 people who came you know that emigrated to the the island of malta and then taught them these techniques about how to I sometimes think in my head when I, we were talking about these things that if there was like a Nephilim or something that were here that's not from here, they got stranded here. Half demon, half angel. I love it. Right, whatever. They they use these acoustics for like, we think we're like, oh yeah, they had these prop like, oh, we go there like, oh, you can echo and stuff. But like us humans don't have the same whatever their bodies or stuff, whatever vocal sounds they can make they would maybe use this stuff what well, we could never on, on the level that they do right but it's just left there like so it's like or they didn't they just because if this is actual information it feels like this information would be so important that you would see this for malta than everywhere you're like oh yeah we just got to make some fucking sound chambers and this and that like this seems like really really important information if this is the fact so i always kind of think that maybe this is some sort of like if it is the left one that it's either something they didn't want us to know or that we just can't even fathom what to do with it in our human bodies. Like they are just human bodies mm. are not going to make the noises needed to activate whatever acoustic properties are there to the full potential. Well, you've, we've heard that. I mean, you've heard that you hear that all the time in like this field, like acoustic properties, frequencies, like, higher geometry we heard about with freddie silva like the in the in the crop circle themselves would emanate a different frequency from the surrounding areas you hear about it in like the great like the great pyramids and like the king's chamber it vibrates at a certain frequency so yeah uh the the cultures of the time knew something about the frequency like frequency has to have an effect on human body in some way because if if just all matter in general is vibrating frequency right just atoms mole- atoms into molecules molecules vibrating together to form this surface depending how they how tightly they vibrate or how tight they are and how fast they vibrate yeah, so if you can not- 
Like if okay. you can, what I'm saying, if you, if you, you can see it when like an opera singer breaks glass or whatever, or that that principle of like a resonant frequency can affect matter. Like so, sound can affect matter. So if the you can identify the frequency, <laughs> let's say of of cancer. Let's say you could. This was this has always been like a pseudoscience thing. They say like, oh, if you could identify the frequency of cancer and you could hit it with ultrasonic waves at that frequency. Yeah. You could actually disrupt the cancer cell and kill it from the inside. Or the and Twin Towers. Or you could dustify the Twin Towers <laughs> with ultrasound from space. <laughs> I'm saying that's, that's, an, that's just a, like sound, like vibration. Is all, it always interconnects these ancient sites, not just multiply. Like pretty much everywhere we talk about, like, oh, it's got a weird acoustic properties. I wonder why. We're in, these, we're in these Nephilim death chambers where they used to bring 700 humans at a time and just hum Vaporize it until them. they died. And we're in there like one frequency Whoa. below just fucking turning into bones. Ooh, ooh, we're all humming in there. Oh, listen to the echo. It's got an eight second echo in here. Little do we know, one more second, we just evaporate into dust. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and if you, pro- if you probably brought up this point, um, I think our buddy Jason Martell would would agree with us that yeah it's speaking on the the idea that sound and vibration can affect matter it's like perhaps this is what had aided them in moving uh some of the objects like the large stones that that would have been you know that that would take immense effort to to you know and ingenuity to have moved by themselves but it's like maybe that the sound actually affected those along with another uh, piece of Malta's mysteries is these there are these formations which are referred to as cart ruts don't um, give it away Dan we gotta take a short beer break and we're gonna get to the cart ruts cart ruts right after get a couple beers and maybe a little doobie we'll be right back Woo.
We're back. We're talking about some Cartwrights. 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 That's exactly what um, we're saying there, Dan. Is it ruts for yeah. carts? Uh, well, they appear to be, or it's ruts like that's something. the only way. That's the that's the way that they appear to be. Like if you look at them straight on, you'd be like, okay, these are these are you know a series of parallel grooves and or maybe tracks that are carved into the limestone bedrock found all across various locations in Malta. Like, and these these ruts will run, uh, you know, in straight or just slightly curving lines that extend for long distances. But it's basically um, sometimes like, like several ancient kilometers. train tracks. You just like once you get the grooving, you just fucking plunk it in. You just pull. Well, let's see. Um, when at first look, you're like, oh, that could be natural, and then nope, they're per- like perfect. Perfectly, yeah, perfectly spaced, spaced. And, they just, and they just follow each other yeah across this fucking across the land it's wild um uh most scientists date these to sometime around the bronze age probably around 2000 or 2500 you know 2500 bce and that they, but you know these things may have been they've been ex- in existence for thousands of years that they've been there just kind of hanging out there and um you know apparently they can be found in like several locations across the maltese islands um but they are mostly found on these limestone plateaus and hillsides. Um, now, they're not all exactly the same. Like some of them vary in width. And they're saying that probably uh, that they are, are probably around 60 to 90 centimeters apart from each other. Um, but the Something depth like can also uh, vary and that some are pretty shallow, but others can reach like several meters deep uh, into, the, into the limestone bedrock now it's like trolley tracks and they don't know what they're for like they they, they're 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 not really sure well i guess they didn't have wheels though right well it's like bronze age they they bronze age they might have had wheels five thousand years ago but we didn't four thousand yeah for that for three thousand i thought we just said they likely didn't have wheels maybe they're just pulling sleds that was like five thousand years ago but yeah sleds or you know fourth fourth millennia bc modern day iraq with the first wheel discovered See, I wonder if it was something like, you know, and this is just me. I know nothing about history. Absolutely nothing. But really? due to the fact that you said <laughs> that we don't know, you've opened a door for me to just sure. take wild guesses. Yes. No. I no, wonder if it's something like, <laughs> this is going to get wild. But, you know, there is evidence of like, you know, animals and stuff on the, on, on the islands. So what if they carve, the, the first things they do is they carve these. They didn't know the wheel. They're like, this is so foreign to them to have a okay. wheel. Yeah. So it's like a bobsled track, right? And they just lube up these fucking tracks, right? They just lube up these okay. tracks and then pull carts, right? Sure. With the uh, with basically like blades on them. Yeah. I mean, sure. Um, and just slowly. It could have been that, but like we were saying before, perhaps, perhaps, you know, if you want to go wild speculation, you're saying like, hey, maybe these are just actually, yeah, maybe they have some type of sledge that they put on there, and that they somehow propelled this thing with these acoustic uh, technologies that they were talking about. Because we, you know, we talked to our buddy, you know, like I said, Jason Martell would probably would be like, yeah, sonic technologies to like move stuff along these, and like you want to keep them going in, in one direction or whatever. Like you would just kind of like. You know, you'd use your sonic technologies to levitate these objects, and then you just kind of push them. You just push it along these oh, tracks. Shit. Like that's, a, that's a way better idea. Um, mm. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's, I guess Fucking it magnets. Less messy than having to lube it up with whatever. I guess animal yeah. fat, like, or yeah. some kind of like. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, I don't yeah it's like, <laughs> where would you get? They don't have the wheel, but they have industrial amounts of lube. Like, where are they getting this? <laughs> From the future, baby. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's 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 the sex jelly from the uh, Villa Boas encounter. Like it's, yeah. uh, it serves a dual pr- purpose. Not only weird arousal jelly uh, that you, when you get abducted by aliens, but it is also a uh, it's a good way to move your your, no, your see fifty that... ton limestone uh, stones around. Yeah. No, that does make more sense to me that it would it'd be some sort of like like track for like anti gravity because if like if we're, if we're leaning towards like there's some sort of ancient technology that we don't know about in an ancient civilization that was possibly behind these things i'm gonna go ahead and say that they'd be like if they're doing all this other stuff they'd be like yo use a wheel idiot <laughs> like let me show you <laughs> fucking round see this ball rolling put it on the fucking carts <laughs> it's crazy because um, what if what if this hypothetical there was some advanced civilization and these they had these tracks. The tracks were the foundation, and in the tracks was some type of metal for some type of anti-gravitic sled, let's say. 
because mm-hmm. metal metal most metals most natural metals if, until you make them like type of alloy rust like any type of, any type of iron derivative is going to rust when it gets right. to the surface so like, iron in the ground will yeah. stay there forever but as soon as it hits air well they got say you throw something in the landfill yeah, after a few hundred yeah. Yeah, a few hundred years, it's going to disintegrate, turn to dust, red dust, and eventually, if there's a big flood, wash away or whatever. So say there was something in there. That, that, we're, we're talking 10,000 years plus. Oxidizes, washes away, turns to dust, goes into the soil, flood comes, washes it away. Now we come back and we go, oh, there's these fucking grooves here. No evidence of any metals, though, because it's been washed away. Now, what are these groups for? I don't know. Maybe use them some type of sled, I guess. Because ninety centimeters does not seem that far to be that's one meter. Any, yeah, to have any like, like, to, that's not a big cart. One meter, yeah, one meter cart. And some the crazy thing is, in the uh, in the documentary, I think it's episode three on ancient mysteries or ancient apocalypse. Some of these tracks actually descend into the water. So they've been there. So sea level has been rising for since the end it's been rising for 10,000 years yeah and then some of them like go off like cliffs they just like sheer cliff they're just like like they yeah just end. They just... so yeah there's like they end in random spots so some of them go into the water so if there was a civilization here let's say during the last ice age because this is far enough we're well out of the ice caps this would have been probably a nice four season place um there what the fuck was i just saying <laughs> four seasons it's, it's end of the last ice age last ice age cart ruts are going into the water oh that, yeah that's right that's right cart go. ruts okay. in the water there you go so there was a civilization here ten thousand years ago if we could follow those ruts how far do they go down so if they go down like say imagine they go another 100 meters that that puts that like occupied land at ten thousand plus years ago just like that just because we haven't, we just don't know because we haven't found fossils. We found those couple teeth. So now you're ten thousand years, and then, I mean, how how far go, do we go back? Because if there's Neanderthal, so they've been, how long? Like they've been gone for tens of thousands of years, yeah. and we, we, it's now widely accepted that we coexisted, we fucking fucked around with them. Some of us yeah. got Neanderthal DNA. Mm-hmm. We coexisted at the same time, probably for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years. We had us and those guys kind of the same they were a little stockier stronger we might have been a little smarter and more dexterous and Hi, my name somehow is Brandon. this is my neanderthal wife <laughs> <laughs> she just care she can carry you everywhere yeah she's really strong no but they actually thought now she's, they think that she's given me 16 children <laughs> four at a time yeah. They come. They come walking out. <laughs> they come walking out fully grown. Litters, <laughs> fully developed. They have muscles. They come walking out the carry oh, club. Shit. Easy. Uh, my pelvis has been ground to a fine dust. I can yeah. no longer walk. <laughs> I've got like a cane. I like walk with one of those like hip dysplasia. Multiple walks. fractured. I have multiple <laughs> fractures in my pelvis. <laughs> Worth <Yeah>. it. <laughs> uh, Get yourself. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's, it's another another one of the theories is that uh, that's kind of out there is that perhaps that these these tracks were um, like maybe not just used for transportation of some type or you know perhaps anti gravity sleds or something like that, but um, perhaps they were kind of the infrastructure for the formation of a ancient power grid that mm. there's you if you ask some people like some of these might be line up with you know the the geomantic lines or ley lines or anything that run across that island um that these that these that these cart ruts uh were were built or you know formed in such a way uh to take advantage of those you know uh terrestrial energies uh you know those latent terrestrial energies that perhaps you could amplify them you know either with your does the cart tracks lead like to the temples um i'm not sure to follow that's them, something that didn't really come across it didn't sh- so yeah. if, in that case say those like uh, gigantia was it's like the power center and then mm-hmm. has all these tracks and in those tracks are laid some type of material but over the years they've it's been it's been taken like say it was just like another type of stone that was set in that track and that was a conductive material and then another culture comes along and they go oh that looks pretty sweet and they scoop them all up because they use it from something else but so the power grid 
I guess what are you powering though at that point? Like what are we? What are we well, like I said, it could like it could low also, voltage like a Afghan, number of things. Uh, I suppose. Uh, the, was it, what was what did Martel's Baghdad choice? Battery. Baghdad, Baghdad battery. Baghdad battery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that would yeah. like, that would make sense too, Zell. In your in your same in your same reasoning that these cart paths, so we're thinking something travel on it. But yeah, it's maybe it was some sort of inlay conductive metal, and that's just how they ran their power. Like they metal had, or rock they, or something. Yeah, or something that's now long gone and and maybe more over so than you see see my brain keeps going towards that something fucking crashed here something crashed and they mm. just pulled their ship apart and whatever they had and to they're like well we're stuck right and we've <laughs> got to build these echo chambers we're going to try to get a message back but like this is it we've got to build we got to coexist here as long as we can and so like malta is them building a society you know, and and th- this would be a perfect spot because, like, think if you were building this, you're like, listen, we want to steer clear of these fucking apes, <laughs> that are these hairless apes that are running around. They're fucking savages. They're f- absolutely wild. They're gonna kill us. Uh, they've got crazy animals. You know what? Well, let's go here. Let's build our our little civilization here. Let's try to we'll try to contact home and. Uh, live as long as we can and they make it one generation of whatever they were and then die off and then slowly we find it start they pulling can't. it apart so that what, what were the tracks and landing strips well maybe it's just that they like power like they had a ship power source or something that's long gone that, and they just slowly pulled everything apart and they had like yeah like this was powering power uh, some sort of technology that we can't even fathom uh, based on naturally occur- occurring elements on Earth, they had just a more symbi- like a symbiotic relationship with the natural elements than we do, maybe, or they just had a better understanding of how to more efficiently utilize uh, the elements on Earth than we currently do. So, if they came in a ship, do you think it, then if we went did a nice uh, spent some time diving around that area, is there an alien ship at the bottom of the ocean, washed off the shore? Uh, well, no, I would say it'd be eroded and gone eroded well who knows what it's like who knows what it's built of right like oh, it's gotta be some, a, if oh, you're an maybe. alien ship you're some type of like pure pure 100 percent efficient superconductive yeah. alloy that is yeah but if they maybe, pull it if they're they pulling it apart ship. yeah maybe but maybe, maybe they're biological ship apart. yeah mm-hmm. maybe maybe that's a good that's a good point but i just don't yeah. know that's that's kind of why i think like i can kind of like grasp onto that and be like okay well that's why it's in the middle of the ocean because you don't you don't want to you don't want to fucking run, have run-ins with anyone else. Like you can be self-sufficient there. Like you're fine, right? Because of like everything else, I'm like, why isn't there fucking temples around the Mediterranean there? That age range. Um. Yeah, and if we're talking, if we're talking about uh, visitors from the stars, you know, celestial beings and whatnot, we we we'd have to touch on the what is known as the Tarxian temples and their specific alignment. Uh, that is pretty neato. So the Tarxian temples actually consist of four structures uh, that are built all built out of these enormous, uh, as they are megalithic, built out of enormous stone blocks. Surprise! <laughs> and they are the largest known prehistoric site in Malta. Like these are the largest ones. Um, uh, you know, the the majority of scientists have have dated these structures to between 3600 and 2500 bc um and then with there was a phase where they kind of fell out of use and then they came back into uh between 2400 and 1500 uh bc apparently and now the temples were seemingly abandoned at one point from what we can understand and then they were rediscovered along with the you know like i said the industrialization and urbanization of malta a lot of these structures were rediscovered uh mm. and, and popped up and this is also one of them so uh, when when they found these temples um the first thing that they found was they they initially had found a number of animal bones and tools including at least one flint knife and then the number of altars and and reliefs that depicted uh domestic type animals so from the from this evidence it was kind of they drew the conclusion that perhaps that these temples were actually places of like animal sacrifice that this is where they brought their animals to be sacrificed you have these depictions of them and you know for for whatever reason you know good crop yield good luck whatever you know bless the new year whatever you're gonna do 
but there's also an interesting thing now there is a oh, all that's across, what the not just for, the blood yeah, that's the, just, they, they f- everything ran the on iron. blood everything ran on blood uh the um here's something interesting that is like all across not just here but all across malta uh, even in the um i think they mentioned it also in the hypogeum there is evidence of this spiral motif like the, like a lot of tons of structures within malta are all decorated with this type of like spiral designs or spiral designs or stuff that looks like eyes or things like this but they have just all, all across the mega like on the megaliths or somewhere inside these structures are just like evidence of just these painted on like spirals um like constant just symbols of of, you know they don't know what they mean but they're obviously significant because they drew tons of them like everywhere um and and a bunch of these structures and it's just like all of these symbols and all these like the ancient you know one of the most ancient symbols is just the spiral and then why they put it there is still a mystery about why they put these things there but they're all there and like this like the spiral is is it is present in ancient cultures like all across the world like that 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 symbol for something and usually it means um you know it's been interpreted to mean something perhaps along the lines of like infinity or um you know kind of a, like a like a like reaching out like the, the doorway into the into the immaterial or something like that, a gateway uh of some sort so it's usually what they these things Portal. are interpreted to be um so yeah and it's like so all of these structures that you know perhaps served a, a ritual or a um or some sort of uh, ceremonial thing are all like you know have these spiral motifs like perhaps this is what they thought of as like their portal their gateway mm. into whatever they were looking into but you know here in the Tarxian temple they definitely have that now one of the more one of the most interesting things is that the the Tarxian temples have a very specific alignment or at least when they found them they you know when as they were studying them they realized that the tarsian temples um they have an alignment which occurs during the spring and autumn equinoxes and that the is these two points in the year uh you know when day and night are equal in length that the alignment is observed on the morning of those equinoxes and then Um, during those uh, equinox alignments like sunlight enters through specific openings in the temple structures and then illuminates particular areas that seemingly designed that way within the complex and then it creates this like temporary lighting effect that highlights specific architectural features within Mm. these within these buildings that's fucking cool it's so fucking wild so so they're pointing out something at a certain time we just don't it's, understand it's why. Like, it's like Raiders of the it's like Raiders of the Ark bullshit. You yeah. know, it's like it's like fucking you put your staff in there and you just like like lighting up all this really cool stuff. But Dude, um because that's what uh because that's what Hancock says about another reason he thinks that the date of these temples are so much older, because like the on the equinox in the spring, like the you can see the procession of the planet. If you can rewind in time and you point the opening of this temple. There's 19 temples and they're all slightly aligned differently, but all kind of looking the same way. So he says that the rising, like the rising star at that time was Sirius. And if you date that back, that puts the temple way older than you think it is. Because if some of the temples look right now, not aligned to Sirius, they're like off some degrees. But if you were to go back through the procession, he says that these temples built at different times are all pointing slightly different ways and therefore signaling their time in Earth's history of when they were built because these people had a knowledge of astronomy. And they're like, if we build the temple like this, on this day, the sun will rise. This rising star will come through the gate of this temple only on this one day every year and for so many years. And then it will change slightly. And they're like, well, we have to adjust the next temple to show it that it's going to rise here. And then they keep doing it over all these temples. And if you look it up, I mean, I have, I, I don't have the credentials to fact check, but as he says it through these temples and built different times, they're all pointing slightly different ways. And the, it's signif- sign- signaling where it was in the procession. And then you can date that back based on that type of structure. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm picturing them like building one temple. And then it's like a hundred years later, it's like, Fuck! Fly, like, start, like, God, Damn it. Like why can't everything just stay in one spot? We gotta build another one to the well, to the anti gravity sled. Move it that way. Yeah. Well, or it's or it's one of those things where they were like, 
you know, they're like, okay, well, we're just logging how long we've been here. Like we will build this one and, it, and we're, we're just not collecting all the information from these temples. But to, to, to for me, I mean, it's, it's weird that mainstream archaeology won't think that way as well, because it, if you're talking about some of the, pers- like they're, they're going to be so per- precise acoustic to get these acoustic properties and then like mainstream like historians and stuff are going to be like yeah but they were off a little bit on the stars be like well if you rewind to like date if we date it back it actually did fit a star it fit this but then it would just have to we would just have to adjust the dates they're like no we won't they were off they were off on the star thing i was like it just doesn't doesn't make sense to me i'm like it would make more sense that at one point this was perfect even if you're trying to poo poo on it it's just cool that these people knew about astronomy and they could predict eclipses and they could predict all this stuff. It, just if you go, if you throw any type of if you just go a straight history, you're like these people somehow through the years of because there's not nothing written through the years of just verbal histories. Be like on this on this night, this star shall appear here, and then the, the next generation is like, well, he said it would there. He said it'd be there, so I'm gonna check it out. Oh, sure, oh, there it is. Boom. And it's like, fuck so it, they idiot, ha- it's a little off. <laughs> it's a little off. Yeah, change it up. It's just crazy that if if you just go with just straight, if say it was just a straight line, just the fact that we just keep kept just staring at the stars because it, we had no light pollution, let's say. Yeah. And then you're for most of the year. I mean, you wouldn't on, even you wouldn't even really like we we think like if they would have, you know they have like fire or a candle or or even that stuff, but even that is rare. Like you wouldn't use candles because even can, candles were hard to make. Like and they d- probably didn't have candle technology. Well, you'd have like fire, that. but it'd be very central to. Yeah, your, but you also portion, wouldn't. Yeah. You'd only use fire for cooking and stuff. Like you wouldn't even really use it to like for like well, hardcore. I'm sure you got guys fucking I, playing with fire sticks out in the woods. I mean, may, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, fire is like a bug's not new. Yeah, you wouldn't want to set all. You wouldn't want to be playing. Forever. You want to be playing with fire with all your wooden structures like sitting around. Like, they're stone that structures though, Dan. These are pure stone. But they also have wood in there. Like <laughs> and all of your belongings would be made of wood. <laughs> It'd probably be like, I don't want to play with fire. But just saying that they're, you know, yeah, like the that the stars would be your main source of entertainment at night, you know, if you weren't like just going to sleep. And, you know, being able to predict like where they were is like that's a huge thing and even if it's like okay it's like you know they're tracking just the one star the sun and like it just like makes a sweet light show during these two days it's pretty fucking rad like you know just like it, imagine the party you'd just be like you'd count down like eh, ah, yeah. oh, doom, and then it hits like you know it hits the little thing and you know everybody starts humming their their anti-gravity chants and everybody mm-hmm. starts floating in the air and partying and yeah. that'd just be pretty rad that'd be pretty cool. yeah. I, it just That's seems funny. a little crazy like that <laughs> We know we now know that this like astro astronomy, they they knew something about it, but the yeah. fact that we don't say like, because I guess the fact that we like we say okay the, this is lining up if you, you we can rewind the sky and be like yes this was pointing this way at this time that temple is actually pointing that way. Maybe it was built earlier, like because when we because we date stuff with organic, right? Yeah. Carbon. Usually, so if, like, yeah. if there's something buried at the site, you dig it up. You're like, oh, that was buried at the site. Of the- oh, boom, that's six thousand years ago. But like, I always wonder on these, especially at like sites like Malta. Like the, you can't. It's harder to get there. Like, how, like how much have you re- have you really really dug? Have you really found out? Have you done all the like, go underwater and like look for more ruins? Like if that if it had been there, say for ten thousand plus years, and it's two hundred feet below. Maybe your big, the biggest ruins are 200 feet. Like, have we done that type of like, like the, well, we call it lidar on the jungle. Is like, what do you have? I, I guess type of a sonar for the sea, like to try and bounce off the to see oh, if there's do, any structures. We, we kinda, yeah, we kind of do have that. The ground, the, we do have. I don't know if any wide scale surveys have been done. Just, Malta, I, I just imagine like that kind of that, that those ty- those type of like scientific expeditions probably cost a lot. So you and you're not going to get. There's no money out of it. Like you have to be funded in order to find this reason. Like you can't. Mm. You're not well, selling and you're, that and you're product. Sh- and you're doing a sh- yeah, you're, it's a shot in the dark, right? You're like, I have no idea if we'll find anything. They're like, well, I'm not paying for it then. <laughs> I need $20 million to go check for something that I hope is there. Yeah. What's your, do you, what if it's not there? You, like, well, then I don't know. Yeah. We'll, make it, we'll, make, we'll make five seasons for History Channel TV show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we got we to gotta, we gotta recoup the losses on this somehow. We spent, we'll sell we it spent to History Channel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that, the 
the submerged civilizations that always fascinates me because if there was something just if there's a big drop off and there was like a little plateau that's been you know 10,000 years ago was, was right on sea level and now it's 200 feet below and 200 feet's like you can't you don't just get there you don't from the surface you don't you like it's pretty far you if and the sea is thousands of feet deep like there's and the, there's lots of geological like scenarios where a, like a huge landslide all of a sudden from 200 feet now you're a thousand feet under like how much stuff has like crumbled under the sea how much is and then all the sediment over thousands of years yeah how much is lost covered like how much is lost under like say just because we, we, we've been here for we've been here for hundreds of thousands of years with the same brain capacity and in any civilization you would like it would make the most sense to be by the water because you would get a river's mouth or something yeah yeah like fishing fresh water and then it's like that's the first to go in a in an in an event like that like if we just what's the stat if we if we raise the sea levels like 50 feet right now like 70 percent of earth's population is underwater like if if you woke up to because all the yeah all the main ports are on the sea all the the world's biggest rivers that end at the sea like that, like the, all these places that are, waterways are the easiest travel. That's where all, most of the people are most of the, especially most of the, like the big metropolises that usually house the biggest companies with all the engineers and scientists that go with it. If that does all of a sudden, like, you know, just kind of goes underwater. Well, I mean, now we, we, we could escape pretty quick, but like, let's say there was some type of cataclysm. Yeah. Quick flood, flash, you know, huge tidal flood from an asteroid impact gushing into the ocean. All of a sudden, 100 feet, 200 foot waves, it sweeps over your whole land in one night, one day, and it's gone. Toast. And thousands of years later, there's not a lot of evidence left of it. And you'd be like, that couldn't happen. There's no fucking way there was a big flood. And it's impossible. Well, it's like, it's, it's, it's weird to me. Like, it just, it just, like you said with the carbon dating and stuff where it's like i wonder were they fighting that were they were, were they so sure of that date based on just because of what they were finding in the area and they're like okay well this is now older than this the it's pyramids what they found yeah the pyramids and stonehenge and this is now really pushing the limits of our understanding of human history so this is where we think it's going to be. This is where we're placing around 5,000. Like, I wonder if you go back now, like, had they found Gobeki Tepe first? And you're like, hey, Gobeki Tepe is 12,000. And then you go back and look at Malta. You're like, okay, well, maybe Malta is, in fact, older based on some of the, the, the evidence, right, of this, of their astrological. That's been backfilled because we've destroyed it. <laughs> yeah. So. It's uh, it's interesting. Thing. I still think it, it just it just fucking boggles my mind that an ancient civilization with nothing around would just pop up here, of all places, and just build superstructures. It's crazy because I didn't really so find many of them. I didn't find uh, like there must have been massive quarries for those type of like forty ton stones. I must, but I didn't really. Is there's not a, Malta's like not a very documented. On the internet, if you search multi, you get like the tourist, the tourist you, traps, and a couple you like can do scientific a lot of papers. But you don't research about it. <laughs> yeah, but there's no like, I don't know. It just it's kind of like obscure. Like you would never even. Like Braden said like, yes, I had to, you had to search it up on a map because Malta. What the fuck is that? It's a it's a, fasc- it's a fascinating island because, like I said, it's just like it's very dense and like archaeological stuff where it's such a small place. Uh, We've only we only covered like four things, but there's there's at least like there's ten like 15 like important structures there like 19 temples and then yeah a bunch of other sites yeah and and there's a tons of islands 40 kilometers like it's not it's not big it's not that's not a big area it's like the outskirts of uh of like a metropolis city like say it's like la county (laughs) it's the size of la county it's just like just that but now i guess la county has like fucking 30 million people but yeah 
it is, a, it is an interesting little island that is just kind of yeah that, that like there is there is a point like uh, from what historians can tell like the island was almost like kind of abandoned like it's just like a lot of the the population kind of left off or whatever but there was just like uh, some of these places were abandoned like completely abandoned like these huge me- me- megalithic structures that probably had some si- at some time were huge had huge cultural importance and now they just they left them but it doesn't seem at the time like a, a suitable area to be able to like even keep a civilization going like if you had like a f- let's say even five thousand years ago like they're saying you're fucking surrounded by the sea you don't have a your source of fresh water is uh is rain rainfall and now you're like you're and you're dependent on like food and stuff is like you don't ha- you don't have a lot of space to work with in this like it just doesn't make sense to me that this would be the spot that like to me i'm like it just doesn't make sense like anywhere else along the mediterranean we should see signs of like an eight like a civilization around this Dude, age that's what i mean about the submerged civilization because if you were to go drop sea level 250 feet or what or more whatever it is from last ice age all the way from Italy and Sicily and Malta, were all, it was all one country. So if there was they, something there, it's all hundreds of feet underwater, under sediment. It's it's there. It's pro- maybe we'll never. We're we're not gonna probably not gonna find. We, we, well, we said, like it's, it's expensive to go to, too, and there's like, yeah. Because all that, same when like um, like Indonesia, all those islands of Indonesia, that was all just one archipelago, just right, all the way up to Southeast Asia, Indonesia, all the way New Zealand. Australia was all a continent. Like you could walk that whole fucking thing. And then it's all slowly submerged over the last thousands of years. And probably a ton of great like civilizations or at least their cities had slowly been swallowed into the sea. <laughs> like, like they're sitting under there. We, gone. Like how much of how much have we really explored with any type of like structure finding sonar underwater? Like under the like, sediment probably like pro- like probably like point one percent of actual like surface area of the earth. So like we'll scan some stuff probably in the Bermuda Triangle, a few other like high traffic areas, let's say. Probably scan some stuff there. Like, oh yeah, there's the, there's a canyon there, there's this there, that there. We found the Bimini Road doing that probably. Well, I guess that, I think that was diving originally, but because we, we've talked about um what's the one in Japan? The submerged Yon- structure. Yonaguni. Yonaguni. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, that's natural. They're like, well, it looks man-made kind of as well. So maybe there's just more. Like that shit's probably all over. Anywhere there's some type of, you know, 100, 200 foot submerged plateau, there probably was people living there at some time in some Earth's point, history. Yeah. If were they had super advanced ancient culture, maybe not, but there was probably something there. And like we, like if we've lost most of it. Sea levels are at their highest they've been in like 100,000 years or something. Like we, we had thousands of years of glacier. Where the sea level, we had no like the land was sunk, like that, and now we're slowly filling back up. And what if what if, is if all the ice caps and all the glaciers melt, we're gonna lose water like twenty. Well, no, it's, no, it's not. It's twenty percent more land mass loss. We can hope it's water world. It'd be more fun if it was water world. Yeah, yeah. Just floating fortresses. That's all. That's all that's water, left. In water world too. Let's go. Come on. Zola might it. have some oceanfront property. Do it. Bring that ocean in, man. Bring it over the mountains. <laughs> fill up the valley. If it, well, if it comes over the mountains, my house is toast. So, it, it's, so it's what, what am I? I think Kelowna is 400, 300 meters above sea level. So it's got to come up 12, 1,200 feet. To take take you're me probably, up, You're probably okay. I might be all right. Uh, it, it's definitely an interesting one if you haven't looked in it. And if you're, if you're into World War II stuff and there's some uh, incredible – World War II stories about uh, uh, the Allies fighting the Axis and uh, Nazi Germany, Germany the over the strategic point of Malta. Yeah, yeah, and uh, okay. some some historic battles um, to keep it. So uh, very interesting. Hashtag look it up. Let us know what you think. How like how does it does it does that make sense to you? Pop up civilization middle middle of the oh. Mediterranean Sea, nothing around, uh, predates everything we know, other than Gobekli Tepe. No big deal. Not biggie. Giant megaliths, middle of nowhere. 
underground weird ass, underground weird ass, opera halls like or what weird ass <laughs> tracks yeah. that we don't know what they just lead off into the sky <laughs> yeah it's been a while since we did a old megalithic yeah. civilization it's been a and while since zell has been megalithically hard rock mm. hard baby this one got me i'm full tilt here that that was fun that's a really <laughs> that's a really cool place man if i had all the money in the world i would go to all like if if I had like just unlimited money, I would go to all the buy all the sites. I'd buy Malta, <laughs> perform lidar mm. around the entire coastline, deep into the ocean. I would find everything. Yeah, well, it's it's just. I would love to go all to all the like all the big sites, man, like Egypt and Malta and yeah. Punta Punta, and I'm not I'm never going to Machu Picchu now. I <laughs> I hate that place. I'm done. I hate it everything to do with the Peru government <laughs> travel board and everything. I hate it. I I just now have to change my focus from Machu Picchu, unfortunately, to the rest of the world's open though. Other than yeah, that, other, oh, Malta's pretty cool. You get a Malta. Malta be fucking dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Basically, Zell's against unions. <laughs> I'm against anti-government people who shut down the railway station and welded the track shut. It's closed down tourism to their country twice. <laughs> and now I just, I've lost my money and I can't go. So I'm sure it's a great place. It looks fucking awesome, but like, I'll never get there now. Anyways, we didn't talk about, but did we have a theory of the week or a, a, maybe a review to read? Um, yes, we actually had quite a few reviews. Got some reviews? That's a theory of the week would yeah, be. Uh, theory of the week is. Just going to pick a review off the fly here. <laughs> I could I could pick the one where it's critical of Andrew. Since that one was I did read that one in an email. It was pretty funny. <laughs> oh boy! It's only a three star, so we'll leave it. We'll leave that uh, one. I thought it was even two. <laughs> Oof! Oof! We gave three stars to the three of us and minus two for Andrew. Minus basically. two for Andrew. <laughs> oh, no! Everyone gets roasted once in a while. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. we've all we've all been on the short. Yeah, we've end all been of the on the chop block there. Yeah. Um. All right, theoret of the week. Easy way to get it. Go to Apple Podcasts, uh, fucking wherever you do podcasts, and <laughs> just give literally. us a good, nice Rick, review. Our professional podcast. <laughs> uh, this one is from T Ross One from the good old US of A. Five star. A must go to. Started listening to these guys in the spring of 2018 with mm. the episode on flat Earth. I've been mm. hooked ever since. They have entertained my mind while traveling the globe, driving thousands of miles and residing in hotels. Always excited to what to hear what they discuss next. Crazy to listen to conspiracies while pondering cause and effect. My favorite episode was way back with the pyramids. So, hey, way back. Number you know what's funny? Three. If you like that episode, you might I like, like this episode, T. Ross. So, uh, hey, thanks for leaving that review. Help the show. Go, uh, go, um, leave us a review or support us on Patreon or Supercast. Go to aliantheorist.com, the support tab, or go buy yourself a fucking shirt from Fuck. our merch store. We got dope sweet ass merch, sweet merch. And here's the thing if you look and you're like, ah, the shipping, ah, the shipping, listen, you go to our Patreon, support us 50 bucks a month for one month, you get everything we've ever done, and I send you a shirt. All right, so you don't have to worry about the shipping or whatever if it's going to be over. It, it's literally, it's literally the best thing you can do. You get everything, you get a shirt, bada bing, bada boom. Also, by the time this comes out, uh, I some people messaged me and they said, "Hey, listen, is there a way I could pay more for a shirt to support you guys?" I said, "No, no," and then I went. Oh, uh, you know what? Sure. I'll make one <laughs> shirt just for the two people that messaged me. Uh, so if you go, uh, there is a support shirt. But then you're going to be paying the shipping. But hey, two people asked me to do it, so I said hey. sure. Uh, there's a there's one expensive shirt on our store uh, that directly supports the show. All the profits go to the show. Um, so if you want to, you're more inclined to support that way. Hey, all the power to you. But we got some beauties that are supporting us on Supercast and Patreon. Who are they, Zell? Bunch of legends. This week's new supporters getting early access to all the case files, ad free, all the bonus stuff. We have Paul Barnard, a f oh, a top tier pledge by Brian Hubbard. Ooh. He's getting himself a goddamn t shirt. Oh, buddy, I, you know what? I got a message. 
Jeremy Dunstan, Gage Olsen, uh, Olsen, not Ocean. <laughs> Jesus, I got fucking snow. Yash Chandel, and the only theorite of the year, Mr. Burmeister himself, is back with the failure pledge. And as we always say at the end of these things, Um, I am so thankful to be off work all summer. It is going to be such That's pretty a treat. dope. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, so I'm off now till September long weekend. So fuck yeah, man. Just so excited. Got a 